Hakeem Jeffries' uncle was well known, especially in New York, for his controversial remarks. Among the things uh, Leonard Jeffries said, uh, he claimed that rich Jews uh, financed the slave trade. He said that Jewish Hollywood executives, quote, planned and plotted a conspiracy to denigrate black Americans in their films. Uh, he was condemned back in those days by the Anti-Defamation League, by then Governor Mario Cuomo. After a lengthy legal battle, he left his position at the City, City University of New York. How had the politician, Hakeem Jeffries, explained this in the past? So uh, Jeffries has downplayed his associations uh, with the past. And I want people to read this quote uh, that he gave to the Wall Street Journal uh, in 2013, in which he says uh, there was no Internet uh, during that era. And I can't even recall uh, a daily newspaper in Binghamton, New York, but it wasn't covering uh, the things that the New York Post and Daily News were uh, at the time. Uh, Jeffries has made uh, similar comments over the years, most recently in 2019 uh, to the Axe Files podcast. Take a listen to this. My father made a deliberate decision to try to shield us from that controversy because he was very concerned as to how it could just impact our well-being, our focus, because it was an intense situation. I've said that there are many statements that he has made that I disagree with and that obviously are very different than the course that I've followed. Um, and I've sort of left it at that. Uh, so that is Hakeem Jeffries to David Axelrod. In the earlier quote you read, sort of uh, keeping this at an arm's length, I don't really know that much about it. I don't agree, but I don't know much about it. But uh, you went to Binghamton University. That's where Hakeem Jeffries went to college. And you found he had actually written about his uncle and Louis Farrakhan back then when he was 21 year old as a student. What did you find? Yeah, that's right. So Jeffries uh, and the Black Student Union actually invited his uncle to speak on campus. And then after Jewish student groups protested, Jeffries led a press conference uh, defending his uncle. That obviously undermines that quote we just read from the Wall Street Journal a little bit earlier, where uh, he said he could not even recall um, you know, local press coverage of this. He actually led a press conference. Uh, he then wrote this editorial where, where he defended him, and I'm, I'm just going to read a couple lines from it. Uh, he says, Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Louis Farrakhan have come under intense fire. Where do you think their interests lie? Dr. Leonard Jeffries uh, has challenged the existing white supremacist educational system and long-standing distortion of history. His reward has been a media lynching complete with uh, character assassinations and inflammatory, erroneous accusations. Uh, so that is very different of how he reacted, responded, wrote back then to what he says, what he has said. What about today, now that you have this reporting, how is Leader Jeffries responding? So we did reach out uh, to his office yesterday. Uh, we asked, uh, you know, if, the, if there were any inconsistencies that he saw between what he said uh, in 2013, what he said in 2019, and what the actual record shows. They didn't respond uh, uh, to those questions, but they did give us a statement uh, where they said, Leader Jeffries has been clear that he does not share the controversial views espoused by his uncle over 30 years ago. So distance again, but not a direct reaction, a direct reaction at all to the specific reporting that you have and your K-File team has, Andrew Kaczynski. I think your quote is, many on the left hate Justice Thomas because he is a black conservative who has never bowed to those who demand that he must think a certain way because of the color of his skin. What evidence do you have to support that uh, incendiary charge? Uh, when Chairman uh, Benny Thompson calls him an Uncle Tom because of his views on voter ID, and affirmative action, when in fact more black Americans support voter ID and af in, with respect to affirmative action in college education, they're 62 percent opposed to it. So, so that is the most vile, disgusting thing you can say. And, and, and so, yes, yeah, that's, 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 that's the evidence, that's the evidence my time. that I just claim you. Reclaiming my time. Yes. There are a lot of vile, disgusting things that can Will be Will you just said. ask me for an example? The, the notion that that is, right, when some members on this side of the aisle and others have been called the N-word throughout different points of our life belies uh, the point that you have a particular bias. Uh, and it's an overstatement, which is not surprising when you look at the balance of your testimony. And if Chairman Benny Thompson uh, has an observation to make, uh, he's entitled to free speech. You apparently believe that Jenny Thomas, regardless of how many conflicts uh, she has, is entitled to her own political opinions uh, as well. Uh, Can I give you another example? No. Let me go to the other side of the aisle, the extreme MAGA Republicans. The extreme MAGA Republicans 
the extreme MAGA Republicans, the extreme MAGA Republicans, extreme MAGA Republicans, they want to jam their extreme MAGA Republican ideology down the throats of the children and parents in America. That's unacceptable, that's unconscionable, and that's un-American. It has everything to do with jamming the extreme MAGA Republican ideology down the throats of the children and the parents of the United States of America. Their educational agenda is pretty simple. They want to ban books. They want to bully the LGBTQ plus community. They want to bring guns into classrooms, kindergarten and above. That's their educational agenda. They want to ban books about history, ban books about the American journey, ban books about the Holocaust, ban books about slavery, ban books about the Civil Rights Movement, ban books about the LGBTQ plus experience, ban books about the Native American experience, ban books about the Latino experience, ban books about the Asian American experience, ban books about our collective journey. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't want the children of America to learn about the Holocaust. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't want your child to learn about the LGBTQ plus experience in America. The behavior of the extreme MAGA Republicans speaks for itself. And I'm confident that the overwhelming majority of the American people found that aggressive, childish, petulant behavior by the extreme MAGA Republicans who were yelling and screaming on the floor of the House during President Biden's State of the Union address to be distasteful. With unyielding commitment, we are curbing the opioid epidemic. But you, you did say that history will never accept Donald Trump as a legitimate president, and, and the Republicans are making quite a big issue out of that. What is your response? Well, here's the Republican playbook. Facts don't matter. Hypocrisy is not a constraint to their behavior. And in many cases, they believe that shamelessness is a superpower. Uh, it appears to me and to many of my colleagues that something very wrong has happened. Uh, there was clearly Russian interference with the election, and there was close cooperation, it appears, uh, between members of the Trump campaign and Russian spies. There is clearly a cloud of illegitimacy hanging over 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that's growing bigger by the day. The things that Donald Trump has done relative to crimes that may have been committed at his direction or through his underlings possibly connected to collusion with Russia to sell out our democracy. Well, here's the Republican playbook. Facts don't matter. Hypocrisy is not a constraint to their behavior. And in many cases, they believe that shamelessness is a superpower. Uh, but we will also oppose them when we must, particularly as it relates to any effort to go down this rabbit hole of unnecessary, unconscionable, unacceptable investigations of the administration. I want to talk about the American people deserve to know whether Donald Trump is either A, a legitimate president, B, a Russian asset, C, the functional equivalent of an organized crime boss, or D, just a useful idiot who happens to have been victimized by the greatest collection of coincidences in the history of the Republic. Congressman, it Let's sounds like you've come to your own conclusions.